I was uh, vice president of the World's Fair, ran the legal department. I graduated from Rutgers Law School in 1965, came to work for TVA. The general manager of TVA said to me, go where the action is. And the fair was where the action is uh, in Knoxville at the time, and so I, I took his advice. Glad I did. And there was a lot of legal work involved at the beginning of the fair. Basically, you start out with no site, no money, major infrastructure needs. And so I think altogether there were about 80 pieces of property that had to be assembled to create the fair site. It had pretty much been an abandoned rail yard down there. And, you know, the, the biggest obstacle was that in 1979, this was impossible to do. <laughs> Nobody would have thought that anybody could do this. And the excitement of doing something that uh, nobody thought could be done. Something uh, nobody else talks about uh, ever is security. Uh, we're here a few miles from Oak Ridge and uh, some of not too friendly nations were here. Have the opportunity here to get a lot closer to Oak Ridge than they normally would be able to. And uh, so I think there's quite a anti-intelligence effort going on here that's, that's never discussed. Of course, that kind of stuff is never discussed. Of all things, closing day was one of the things that comes to mind. And I remember a radio interview, but he said, Knoxville, you have no idea what you accomplished. That's sort of an illustration of what the fair brought to Knoxville. It certainly made Knoxville a more livable and interesting community. It made it a more attractive place. Uh, it, it wasn't just physical, it was inspirational. It was raising the uh, consciousness about what you could accomplish. Uh, so that's what I think the legacy is.